How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome to this review of Dark Burial, an 8 bit action platformer where you play as one fella with one crossbow and one arrow, though crossbows technically fire bolts. The game is published by Dragius Games, who also published the less than stellar Diabolic, which I've also made a review for. But let's see how this one goes. Now as always, if you enjoy this review, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more Switch Indie Game reviews, which are uploaded every few days. So here we are at the main menu, with some haunted house music playing in the background, and a raven that just won't shut up. Taking a quick look in the options menu, you can swiftly mute the music, and put something else on a little more to my taste. The Raven can keep its voice for now as we check out this VHS shader that overlays some false scan lines onto the visuals. Backing out to the main menu we can quickly check the controls which are very simple with only three buttons alongside the movement controls. We can then jump into the game and work things out as we go. So as we begin the first area we've got our hero whose odd body dimensions means he looks as wide as he is tall. He gives us some intro spiel about evil awakening and he's feeling a bit sorry for himself for being so useless but decides his best course of action would be to light the signal lights to warn the others. He then goes on to talk about highlighting active objects to stick his one single arrow into which he says is both very brittle but can easily bear his weight. When we get started we can see exactly what he means as we can hit the X button to highlight objects which our arrow can stick into. We can then jump on the arrow to ascend up these platforms. Now at this second jump we get our first taste of something that I'll tell you now becomes a right pain in the ass as we proceed through the levels. Your character jumps quite high, but if you loose an arrow at the top of his jump you can't actually jump high enough to get onto it, so you have to time it just right as you begin to land your jump and stick the arrow at the right height. After conquering our first climb, we come across a hanging cage that we can push along its line allowing us to get up the wall. Ahead of this we avoid spikes which no doubt will kill us, and learn that we can also move hanging cages by shooting arrows at them. Following this final ascent we light the torch and move on to the next stage. In level 2 we experience our first death, as we fail to push the cage far enough to make the jump and our character explodes into a shower of blood particles and is returned to the start of the level. Now our life is indicated at the top of the screen, each segment of the red bar is a single life and each skull beneath them is one red bar, so in total we've got 20 lives to play with. What happens if we lose all 20 I hear you ask? Well then it's game over and we'll return to the main menu and have to begin the game from the start again. So continuing from where we left off, we progress through several more areas of platforming, pushing a couple of boxes which can act as platforms to protect us from spikes. And then we encounter our first enemy, everyone's favourite, the bat, which is just as deadly as the spikes and also makes our hero explode. Second attempt though we manage to slot it with an arrow between the eyes, before encountering our second bat where we bottle it and just run for the level's exit. In the next level we meet our second enemy, a skeleton who's also found himself a crossbow. As we drop down he instantly turns and fires, but we're quicker off the mark than he is, and as an arrow strikes him he explodes letting out a cry of pain from his lungless body. From here we work our way through several more platforming sections, utilising boxes and cages where necessary, eventually finding ourselves in a witch's lure, and let me tell you right now, she's a right bitch. She basically teleports around the area appearing in random locations, each time letting out an annoying which is Cackle, and when she appears she spawns one of two enemies. Firstly, a spider which happily hops its way towards us and screeches like a bat when we hit it with an arrow, and secondly, surprise surprise, more bats, and it's at this point where it really sets in how irritating the crossbow and bats are in this game. The bats tend to fly until they're just above your head, which means you've got to jump and time it just right to hit them with an arrow and the hitboxes on the little bastards are pretty tiny. I found the best way to defeat the witch is to jump up to this platform and hit her when she spawns. This takes the spiders out of the equation, and all you really have to worry about is timing your arrows just right to hit the bats. So after losing 7 lives I finally managed to shut her up for good, and lit the signal light in the centre of the arena. The next stage is where the real trolling starts, as you have these stalactites which drop down on you as you pass beneath them, and floor spikes whose hitboxes are incredibly unforgiving. I did manage to get as far as this skeleton who literally trolled the shit out of me by jumping over my arrow, but then I lost my final lives and it was game over. Now I did give it another run through and I got about 6 levels into the cave area, before losing my last life to a bat of all things. By this point I was all platformed out and decided to write this review. 
So when it comes to my thoughts on Dark Burial, they're a bit of a mixed bag. First off, I want to say the game wasn't bad. I was getting some my first indie platformer vibes, but it was challenging and it's clear thought was put into the game's level design. Platforming was pretty solid for the most part, with the whole crossbow timing thing being the biggest pain in the ass, as it often took several attempts just to get the arrow to stick at the right height, and sometimes it would even pass right through the wall. Now the game's approach to progression through levels was one of learn as you die. Similar to games like Limbo, Trial and Death was often the way forward, which would have been fine had the game not given you only 20 lives to play with before you sent right back to the start. I found that after my second playthrough I really couldn't be bothered to give it another go. The worst aspects of the game were the precision required to hit the bats, and the lives limit, which basically acts as a way to extend the game's length, as it's very unlikely that you'll manage to get all the way through the game's 18 levels first time round. So I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with the Shovel Wear stamp of approval awarded to only the worst eShop titles. This is based on my own personal opinion on what a game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money for potential buyers, and for a rating I'd give Dark Burial 2 out of 5 stars. It's a relatively short game and no doubt it'll make a few people rage quit with its precision platforming, trial by death mechanics and its bloody crossbow, but the game's pretty well put together and it'll keep you occupied for a couple of hours if you're looking for a rage fix. You can get the game on the UK Switch eStore for the currently discounted price of £1.79 or from the US eStore for $1.99. I'd advise taking advantage of these discount prices while they last, as I don't think the game is quite worth the full asking price due to its length. And that's about it for this review of Dark Burial. If you enjoyed it, show your appreciation by hitting that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified of future Switch Indie Game reviews. For now though, I want to say thanks once again for watching and until next time, Game on.